Man said to me in page 122, logotherapy as a technique, a realistic fear, like the fear of death, cannot be tranquilized away by psychodynamic interpretation. On the other hand, a neurotic fear, such as agoraphobia, cannot be cured by philosophical understanding. However, logotherapy has developed a special technique to handle such cases too. To understand what is going on, whenever this technique is used, we take as a starting point a condition which is frequently observed in erotic individuals, namely anticipatory anxiety. It is characteristic of this fear that it produces precisely that of which the patient is afraid. An individual, for example, who is afraid of blushing when he enters a large room and faces many people will actually be more prone to blush under these circumstances. In this context, one might amend saying, one might amend this saying, the wish is father to the thought, to the fear is mother to the event. Ironically enough, in the same way that fear brings to pass what one is afraid of, likewise a forced intention makes impossible what one forcibly wishes. This excessive intention, or hyper-intention, as I call it, can be observed particularly in cases of sexual neurosis. The more a man tries to demonstrate his sexual potency, or a woman her ability to experience orgasm, the less they are able to succeed. Pleasure is and must remain a side effect or byproduct and is destroyed and spoiled to the degree to which it is made a goal in itself. Local therapy bases its technique for paradoxical intention on the twofold fact that fear brings about that which one is afraid of and that hyper intention. Hyper intention makes impossible what one wishes for. In German, I described paradoxical intention as early as 1939. In this approach, the phobic patient is invited to intend, even if only for a moment, precisely that which he fears. Let me recall a case. A young physician consulted consulted me because of his fear of perspiring. Whenever he expected an outbreak of perspiration, this anticipatory anxiety was enough to precipitate excessive sweating. In order to cut the circle formation, I advised the patient in the event that sweating should recur to resolve deliberately to show people how much he could sweat. A week later, he returned to report that whenever he met anyone who triggered his anticipatory anxiety, he said to himself, I only sweated out a quart before, but now I'm going to pour at least 10 quarts. The result was that after suffering from his phobia for four years, he was able, after a single session, to free himself permanently of it within one week. The reader will note that this procedure consists of a reversal of the patient's attitude in as much as his fear is replaced by a paradoxical wish. By this treatment, the wind is taken out of the sails of the anxiety. <laughs>